I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we are going to create an application. We have built tables and inserted data into those tables in previous applications. Now we will log into the workspace for our application. It is a container for all the elements of our application. And I will use the Carlo Mora developer account. So we'll log into Apex, use the application builder tool. We will create an application. We will modify that application by adding a logo which we will do by importing a file, a graphic file into shared components. Then we will create a simple form. So keep in mind when you're working in Apex, think about what's happening solely in Apex and things that are happening in the database itself, which is the foundation on which our application is built. When you're working in Apex, like we've done in the last couple of videos, we have used Apex tools, but we have built things in the actual database. You can look at the database, which is shown here, by using tools such as Apex and SQL Developer. SQL Developer has a direct link to the database. Apex gives us a window to the database and also allows us to create users specific to a workspace and applications within that workspace. So down at the database level, I have a schema called animal underscore shelter 191. I might also have a, a half a dozen or a dozen or a hundred schemas uh, with different names, such as accounting or marketing or individuals such as Carlo underscore Mora. Carlo, if he's going to be a developer, has to also have an account within a workspace where he has developer rights. Carlo could be working on more than one application in more than one workspace. Each time you create a workspace, you would have to create another account for Carlo Mora for that specific workspace. So just think about whether you're building things in the application, which would be contained within the workspace in Apex, 
or you're doing something at the database level, which means that you could see what has happened or what has been done either through Apex in the object browser or through SQL Developer. I'm going to log into Apex as Carlo Mora. I'm going to go into Application Builder and create an application. And this will be a new application. And the name of this application will be Daily Operations. And I will pick a particular style. You could pick something different and then see the variations in the style appearance between your application and mine. You do not have to do exactly what I'm doing. But I'll go with the standard Vita. Then I will click Create Application. When we created or had Apex create the application, it created a home page and it created a login page. We'll see that in just a second. And we have some settings that are global for this application. I want to run this application and the first time I do during a session, it will prompt me to log in through this login page. So I will log in as Carla Mora. And I can see that I'm in a development environment because of the options I see below here, where I can flip from a view of the application from an end user perspective, I can flip to the edit page perspective. And I'm not going to talk about this particular page right now because we will use the page designer many, many times. But I'll go ahead and run the application again and I see daily operations. And this is home. We'll add things in this left side navigation area as we create forms and reports. We have a title bar and it also shows daily applications. So I'm going to make a change here, a cosmetic change. I'm going to go back to the application itself and I'm going to go into shared components. I want to add an image in that title bar. It is still text, but it's uh, a picture of text. I'm going to import a file into the application itself, specific to the application. So I will upload a file. So I'll find that under Choose Files. I have it in CTemp. And I want to use Animal Shelter Text. So I'll open that and upload. So I see this here and I actually want to copy this text and replace what I just saw here. I want to replace this with that image. I will go back to Shared Components and then I will go to Application Definition Attributes. I want to alter the user interface. I want to use an image. And so I want to replace the logo with the text that tells Apex where to find the image. The pound sign app underscore images pound sign simply indicates that the file is within this workspace, this application I should say, and this is the name of the file. So I will apply that change and I will run that application. So now we see Animal Shelter up here, which is a picture of text, and we see Daily Operations. The next thing I want to do is to create a simple form. But first, let me pull up the data model and take a look at that and talk about what, what tables would be appropriate for simple forms. So here is a picture or data model which shows the tables that have been built using the scripts in a previous video and the relationships between the tables. So we have one to many where we see the one on this side with this tick mark and the many with the crow's feet. So any one record from here could be related to many records over here. 
when you're looking at whether to create a simple form or a what we call a master detail form, master and subform, you look at what data can stand alone, what data is meaningful when you only see the data from that table. Things such as transaction or activity really don't tell us anything useful if we just see that table, if we create a form just on that table. But if I see data about an animal without seeing its related activity, its related transactions, it's still meaningful data. It gives me data that describes that animal, the breed, the name, the sex, the status, and so forth. I will come back later and make a master detail, a main form subform for things such as animal and its relationship to activity or animal and its relationship to transaction. But I, I can make a meaningful, simple form just on animal, and that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll come back to my application in Apex, go to the application, and I will create a page. So what I want is a form, and I want a form with report. The look here is slightly different than what we've seen in previous versions of Apex. I will click on Next, and then I get a page number automatically, which I can modify, and there are reasons you might want to do this, but right now I will let Apex number the pages. But I have a report page number and a form page number, and I will do a report page name. So I have a report name and a form name. Then I click Next, and I do want to have a navigation item on my home menu. So there will be a link off to the left in that navigation bar and it will be called list of animals. Then I identify what's the source of the data, which is table. It's coming from this particular schema, and the table I want to work with is animals. This is the report. We're looking at the report, and we can show all the columns and the columns listed on the right will be displayed in the report. If I don't want something, I can move it over to the left side, which means it's available but not in the report. I'll go ahead and move that back, and I can change its sequence here in the list of fields or columns. I will click Next, and now we're looking at the form. We have this timeline at the top that tells us where we are in the creation process. So by default, all the fields will be used in the form. Again, I could move them all to the left, which wouldn't make a lot of sense, and I could select which ones I want in the form. I'm going to go ahead and accept all. This will be managed by the primary key column. We have another option for row ID, which is automatically generated by the database, but we'll go with the primary key, which is the column that uniquely identifies each row in that table. And then it's off the screen, but I want the primary key, which is animal ID. Then I will create. And I'm not going to really talk about this right now. Again, we're back in Page Designer. We will do a lot of things with this in future videos to adjust what we see in our forms and reports. Right now I'm going to click Save, and then I will run this. So over here in the navigation area, I can click Home. And that just brings me back to my home page. I can click the first item, which is a report. And this is a report. It means that I can filter. I have a lot of nice automatic built-in features. So I could come in here, for example, and filter on pit and see only pit bulls. I could get rid of that filter. And I could filter on Chihuahua. I didn't type it all out, but that's what I'm getting here. So very nice filtering and organizational features that we won't go into anymore here. But the report is our entry into the form, the form being where we actually can modify and create data. So I click on the edit icon if I want to see that particular record. So this is for a pit bull, and it's animal ID 100001. 
So here is the form, and with this form, I could modify this data. I could change the category, the pit bull breed, and so on and so forth. I don't have to apply changes. I didn't do anything. Now I'm going to close this application and do one more thing here. This is specific to the 19.1 application. I'm going to switch from the default mode to the dark mode. And when I do that, then I can see this look in my Apex environment with a dark background and light lettering. The features are the same. It's a different look. It's not my favorite look. I have other software that has switched to this look, uh, but you do have this option. I like the fact that with Apex, I can switch off the dark mode and go back to what I'm more familiar with and which I think records better in a video, but you can pick your preference.